Hello, my name is Perry Gunderman, and today's Lunch and Learn topic is going to be on the Epicor Data Management Tool. The Data Management Tool, or DMT, used to import, edit, or delete records from Epicor. It can be used for single records or for batch updates. So for this, we're going to go ahead and start by creating a template. In order to do that, you find the template you want to work with. In this case, I'll be working with part for my demonstration. And we'll go down to the template builder here. Once we have it open, we can see that by default, Epicor has selected a couple of records. This is because these are the required fields in order to import, update, or delete a record. So I can see that I need company, part number, and part description. Let's go ahead and click Create Template. On my desktop, it'll, or anywhere else on my computer, it'll allow me to create a template. I'll name this one Example 1. Save it, and then let's go ahead and open it. In here, we can see that I added these column headers. Now, if I put in some information, such as EPC06, part number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, super amazing, but it'll get the job done. And example part. Now we can save it and it says it is being saved as a CSV format. Now you should use CSV in order to use the DMT. You can use an Excel format, but it tends to not be optimized well and will usually crash Epicor. So let's say yes. Now we'll close that. And we'll go back to our DMT tool. Now we'll go ahead and select our part source. Example 1 and here we can see the one record I created. Before we import that, let's go to the part maintenance within Epicor, and we'll put in the number 123456789. The record is not found, so we know it doesn't exist in the database currently. So let's go back here and click Process. After a few moments, we get a message telling us rather whether it completed something, failed, or what the results were. Down here, if we had errors, we could click View in order to open up an error log. They will also list any errors on this box here. Input file, and for anything that we've completed, we can click view to, see, go, to go ahead and see how long it took and how many records were imported, as well as any other information. With that part in, let's go back to our part entry. And let's once again put in the same number, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here, we can see my example part, and the rest of the information is filled in by Epicor as best it can. The more information we put into the template, the less defaults Epicor has to choose. But let's say we don't want to insert one new record, but we want to update a bunch of records from within Epicor. Well, let's start with clearing this out and then going back to Excel. Now, instead of creating a BAQ or pulling in out records individually and typing up the information, there's actually a way we can pull that in ourselves. We can go to Data, From Other Sources, and I'm going to select from a SQL server. This will work for any Epicor 9 environment running on SQL or Epicor 10. And this will also work with some versions of Epicor 8 as long as you have a compatible DMT tool. Now, I need to put in the server that hosts my database. And this is referring to the instance name. And then I can select what database I want to work with. I want to work with the database for E10. And I want to work with, in particular, the part table. This is because I know that's where my records are going to end up and where they're coming from. I can put in some notes, but i just go ahead and click Finish for now. It says I've already created a table like this, which is fine because I've created the new connection. And I can select how I want the information to display. Well, I'm going to display it as a table because I don't really want any of these fancy things. Again, I'm going to save it as a CSV file, so really putting a pivot table is a little overkill. Now, after a few moments, we'll see everything will come back. Now, this is every part that exists within that part table. I really don't want all of that, so let's go ahead and delete a bunch of records out. We can see out of nearly 12,000 records, I'm going to only use about six of them. Let's go back up to the top. 
Here I've selected only four different parts, but that's enough to get the example across. So let's save our file. And by default, this will be an Excel file because it's just pulling from a data source. So we'll have to do a save as onto the computer and click the drop down to select CSV. The normal CSV comma delimited will work just fine, but there shouldn't be a problem with CSV for Macintosh or CSV for MS-DOS. I usually just stick with the CSV though. Now let's go ahead and pull up that data in the DMT tool. I'll select my book one and it tells me that the is or ridge country is invalid. So we'll click OK. Now that means I need to go back because if we try to run it it's not going to work. So we'll go back and find that column. Here it is. So we'll just delete it out. There may be some cases where you want to keep a column and just need to rename it, but for this I really would rather just take it out. Now let's go ahead and update some values. The default for this part is a unit price of 0, so let's change that to 10. We'll change the one above it to 5, the one below it to 4, and the bottom one to 21. Now we can once again save and we'll reload our data in the DMT tool. Once the data is in, we can go ahead and click Process. We can see that one record here, part number 5678, is incorrect due to a generation mask type. That's fine. So we could click here, see additional information on it. Look at the error log as well in a Excel format. So this one will allow us to look at the records that didn't make it in a new template, which we could save, make changes to, and then try to run again. Additionally, whenever this process is run, it creates these logs on the desktop. Finally, if we go back into the DMT, we can view the complete error log or sorry, the complete log, and this will tell us everything that we have put, imported. Now let's go back into Epicor and our part maintenance, and we'll pull up one of the parts. In this case, we'll pull up Dagger, and we can see that our unit price now reflects the new amount that we put in. That should give you a good idea of how you can use a DMT tool and quickly create templates in order to import. There's a lot more depth to the DMT tool that can be explored, but that should be a good example for today. If you have questions, feel free to shoot us an email or visit our YouTube channel for additional tutorials. Thank you and have a good day.